All right, Shalom. I want to first begin by giving all praises, honor, and glory to my power, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Rakak Wadash. Yahweh is the true holy name of the Heavenly Father, who this world in calls God, and Bahasham is in the name, and Yahweh Shai is the true name of our Lord and Savior, who this world in called Jesus, and the Rakak Wadash is the Holy Spirit. And I also want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who are the true leaders of the nation of Israel, that Yahweh Ba'ashim Shai has set up through the Holy Spirit to lead and to guide, and also to be great examples for the nation of Israel. And I also want to say Shalom <clears throat> to the 144,000 men that are laboring and also toiling in this work for the sake of Yahweh Ba'ashim Shai. And I also want to say Shalom to the innumerable multitude which consists of the men, women, and children that Yahweh Ba'ashim Shai will show mercy upon in these last days. And I'm the brother Gabar from the GMS West Palm Beach Camp. And I'm coming back with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh Ba'ashim Shai. And Lord willing, the elect of the nation of Israel is edified. And this lesson... Lord willing, the title is going to be called Never Trust Thy Enemy. And a lot of our people, which consists of the so-called Black, Hispanic, and Native Americans, who are the real Hebrew Israelites, according to the scriptures, a lot of our people, they don't know who their enemy are. Or they've been warned that the self-proclaimed white man is their enemy. But our people, they don't believe that, that he's uh, your enemy. You know, and we're coming into the time of Jacob's trouble. And our people is going to find out that this man is indeed your enemy. And I want to open up. And hold uh, Sirach 12. Let me get this. All right, because not only is the self-proclaimed white man your enemy, and all these nations are our enemies, but our number one arch enemy is Esau Edom. Let's get it. This is, this is Psalms 83, and I'm going to start at 2. For lo, thy enemies make a, make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. Right. Who people is this speaking about? The Israelites. And today, the Hebrew Israelites will be called black. They will be called Latins, Hispanics, native and Sem Seminole Indian. But we are like again, like I said, we are the Lord's people, all right? And it says, they have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. And they doing this each and every way, cutting us off from being a nation, all right? By telling us that we black, telling us that we niggas, all right, they put churches on, on, all on, on, the cor on the corner in the hoods. The East Indian man come up in, in your in the hoods, get rich off of get rich off of the Israelites. The Chinese, the so uh, the so called Chinese man comes in your hood and get rich off of you too, selling you jewelry. All right, sell you these uh, gold and silver idols. They they uh they establish businesses right right in the people hood. The Chinese restaurants selling you all type of abominable foods. They label things as chicken, but really it ain't chicken. It's duck, which is unlawful, unclean animal to eat pork crab shrimp 
lobster. They feed you rat. They feed you cats. Right? And it says, and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more remembrance. Right? And according to the book of Jeremiah, all right, because that's prophecy, that we wouldn't remember who he was as a nation. But in the Lord says in the last days, all right, he shall stir up uh, pure remembrance. And um, all right, so let me hold it. Let me get two precepts while I'm thinking of it. All right, I'm going to hold Jeremiah, but let me go to uh, stir up the pure mind by way of remembrance. Might be in Second Peter. All right, Second Peter three and verse one, and it reads this: This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. Right, and we're remembering who we was. All right, brothers all across the world are identifying themselves as Hebrew Israelites. All right, from each brothers or sisters perspective tribe whether you're from the tribe of Ephraim which which is the so-called Puerto Ricans whether you're the Asherites which are the so-called Colombians all right whether you identify yourself as Issachar which being the so so-called Mexicans or you you're saying that you're from the tribe of Judah which is the head tribe all right today they be called uh so-called African Americans so the Lord is Stirring up our pure minds by way of remembrance. Brothers are uh, keeping the law, dietary laws, keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments. All right, it says, verse 2, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before the holy prophets. Right, and we're being mindful of those words. Right? Brothers are uh, meditating on the laws day and night. All right, we, we walking in the spirit and not of this flesh. And this is another scripture. This is Jeremiah 17 and verse 4, and it reads, And though even thyself shall discontinue from thy heritage that I gave thee. Right? We discontinue from our heritage. All right? But we in the last days, and hey, the Lord is raising up his elect. All right? Because only the elect is going to truly come into this fold. All right? And it says, And I will cause thee to, cause thee to serve thy enemies in the land which thou knowest not. Right. And so who's our enemy that sold us? Who's our enemy that brought us over here? OK, they even tell you that in history. You know, Christopher Columbus came over here, you know, put smallpox in the blankets of the of the uh, tribe of Gad and the tribe of uh, uh, Reuben. All right. Which are the true native tribes. But uh, let's go to Deuteronomy 28. In verse 68, and it reads, And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. And Egypt is synonymous for a house of bondage. And this is this is modern day Egypt. Just take a look at the dollar bill, right? And, and they even worship the same gods as they did back in the time of Egypt. Okay, the God of Pharaoh, all right, uh, Ra, and all these different uh, wicked idols, man. And it says, and the Lord shall bring thee to Egypt again with ships. Right? And this is speaking about modern day Egypt. Alright? Because when we was in slavery and back in ancient Egypt, we didn't get transported over there by ships. So this is talking about present day America. And it says, by the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. So we haven't seen our homeland as a people. Okay, but we in the times now where the Lord is raising up his elect. They're getting themselves ready for the return of the Lord. And the Lord is going to take us back to our homeland. And it says, thou shalt see it no more again. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women. And no man shall buy you. All right, so we got sold unto our enemies. So all the nations outside of the Israelites, man, and even... And even two thirds of our own people. So right here. Okay. We'll get in the camera. Yeah. All right. And even two thirds of our people is considered our enemies. 
All right, Yahweh Shai calls two thirds of our people uh, enemies. And let's get that. Yep, so let me get that, pull that out. Hey man, anybody who ain't serving the Lord is considered your enemy, man. Hey, but who's our number one arch enemy? Esau, Edom. I just want to get this for the two thirds. This is Matthew 12 and verse 30. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. So those who are not truly with the lord all right because the lord says you got to serve him in truth and sincerity so if you're not sincerely serving the lord all right to, according to the wisdom knowledge understanding you are against the lord man so even these false prophets especially these false prophets all right because hey, we're in the time of the end and the prophecies gotta be uh uh spoken about hey we gotta warn our people how you gonna warn somebody but you're not but you're not telling them the truth. Hey, because Jacob's trouble is right around the corner. The hour of temptation. When Revelation 13 and 16, the mark, the Karagma, is getting ready to be implemented. You got these Christians and all these different uh, false prophets not proclaiming the true name of the Father and the Son which is vital, extremely important. Saying, you know, his name is Jesus. You can call him whatever we want. We get the true names in the kingdom. And the Lord said he revealed his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. Acts 14 and 22, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. No, that wasn't it. Oh, forgive me on that one. Uh, Acts 4 and 12. And it reads, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name given. There's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. There's only true, there's only one true name, one correct name. Yahweh and his only begotten son name is Yahweh Shai. Yahweh means he is, he exists. Yahweh Shai, he saves, he delivers. And the Lord is coming to deliver his elect. But you got to call upon the right name. Okay, if your name is Michael and somebody call you, uh, what, John, you're not going to answer. And how much more uh, Yahweh, the God of the Bible, all right, and, and his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai. You think they're going to answer if you continually to call on the, on the wrong name? And, and the true prophets are telling you the correct warning. I mean, are telling you the correct name. So going to Sirach 12 and verse, in verse 10, and it reads, never trust thy enemy. So now we know who our enemy is. Esau, Edom. All right. The other nations, two thirds of our people. You got to, Never, never, ever, ever trust the Edomite. All right, going back to the serpent in the garden with Adam and Eve. All right, Esau, Edom was that serpent. All right, the scripture said he shall be cast out. All right, that old serpent shall be cast out. Let me see if I can get that. Hold on. Revelation 12. All right, so let me get that real quick. Revelation. Revelation 12. And I'm going to start up to verse 7. And it reads, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And this is, this is, this is uh, speaking about what's about to happen in the end times. All right, Michael the Archangel. It tells you that in the book of Daniel. Let me get that real quick. All right, and that word Michael is really Mayaka Allah in the Hebrew. 
All right, and I believe that word uh, Michael goes back to a, a, a god of war, if I'm not mistaken. I might be mistaken, you know. But this is uh, Daniel 12 and verse 1. And it reads, And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. You know, in the times that we coming into is going to be worse than World War One, World War Two. It's going to be worse than hardcore slavery when we had to pick cotton. We was being transported over here on cargo slave ships. All right, it's going to be worse than 70 A.D. This is why, you know, the prophets are, are giving you the warning. Because these times are coming. And your gun's not going to be able to save you. Your money is not going to be able to save you. Your riches. This is the true riches. So it says, and at that time shall Michael stand up. Right, and Michael, the archangel. And let me just go to the blue letter real quick. Because I want to make sure that I'm correct. For the, uh, Daniel. So bear with me. All right, so it says, uh, the Hebrew is Mayaka Allah, and it says, who is like God? Yep, so that's what it says. It says, who is like God? All right, so I was wrong. Let me go back to Revelation uh, 12, and then go back, because this is, this is end time prophecy. Which we are in the times of the end. This is Revelation 12 and verse 7 in the reason there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And there was war in heaven. All right, because why you think Esau Edom is creating a space force? All right, he's going to have the Air Force. He's going to have these military uh, personnel. Okay, that's why we tell our people, you know, not to sign up for that war, man. Because really what you're doing is you're about to go to war with. Yahweh Shai, Michael the Archangel, and the rest of the of the angels. All right, and that's a battle that you you're not gonna win. All right, let me read Revelations 12 and verse 8. And prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. All right, because they're gonna lose. Esau Edom was gonna get uh pulled out of his rulership. All right. The scripture says Job 9 and verse 24, the earth was given into the hand of the wicked. And let's get a scripture. This is 2nd Ezra 6 and 7. Then answered I and said, What shall be the parting asunder of the times? Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. Right? And that was written about in the book of Genesis. I believe that's the, uh, the 25th chapter all right wait where uh esau he came out first and jacob came out last and he had he held on the foot of esau and that was prophecy all right speaking about the times that we in now where east uh jacob the nation of israel is going to pull esau edom out of this rulership through the spirit and power of yahweh bashem al shah and we doing that now all right through this word Hebrews, the fourth chapter says, word is sharper as powerful than any two-edged sword. All right, we break it down to strongholds. Right, and this is why Esau Edom is Operation Warp Speed. You see him creating a space force. Esau Edom know what time it is. Right, and it says, for Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. Right. We, gonna, we got next. The book of Daniel says we, go, we shall take the kingdom and possess it forever and ever. So finishing off with Revelations 12 and 9. And the great dragon was cast out, the old serpent called the devil, and Satan was deceived the whole world. All right, through that, through that uh, deception. All right, that's how they got this earth, through deception. 
I right, broke all the peace treaties with Gad and Reuben, great Rob stole this land. Now our people uh, calling on the name of Jesus, believing that he's the so-called white man, believing that they're Africans. And it says he was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. So Esau, Edom, and, and uh, those his military, you know, they all going to fall. So going back to Syrac 12. Syrac 12 and verse 10 in the reads, Never trust thy enemy, for like as iron rusted, so is his wickedness. All right, just like if you get some. I always use this as a uh, analogy. Say you go buy some brake pads, right? The brake pads be all shiny. Right, but months go, a year go by, those brake pads start to go, start to rust. All right, and that's 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 how Esau Edom is, you know, because he he don't come up, you know, with the pitchfork, you know, with the devil horns. That's what people think of when we speak about Satan. All right, that's that Roman Catholicism uh, mindset. But Esau Edom, he comes peaceable. You know, hey, buddy, how you doing? Come with the smile. He got the three-piece tuxedo suit on, shirt and tie. Right, just like Joe Biden, you know? He, he, before he got elected, he was promising all you dumbasses who went out there and and uh, voted for this man. He ain't do nothing. He ain't do nothing that he promised that he was gonna do during those elections. All right, the first day he got in office, passing all these, writing all these uh, bills, signing them off, legalizing uh, trans. You know what? This man is a known uh, pedo. All right, but this is the man that you people uh, voted for. But well, this is Psalm 55 and verse 21. Thy words of his, the words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. All right, war is in his mind. That word heart is a Hebrew word going back to love was speaking about your mind. And that's, that's all this man knows, war. What was the blessing that the, that, that Yahweh Shah gave unto this devil? Book of Genesis, the 27th chapter, speaks about his blessing was given to the as the sword. And what does the sword represent? A killing instrument. It says his words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords, right? Softer than oil. Right? All, all, all up in your face, smiling. Mike, he call you buddy. Save all, the, talk that smooth talk, right? Use big words, but that's but that's deception. Here we are. We give our people the hundred percent truth according to the Bible. You know, and that goes into when the rich man speak, people stole it to the clouds. All right, this is uh, going back to Syrac 12. In verse 11, it reads, Though he humble himself and go crouching, yet take good take good heed and beware of him. All right, this scripture said, he, he, this man a cunning hunter. So he gonna come humbly, peaceful, just like he did to the, to the Gadites. Came peaceable. All right, but what did he do? Slaughtered them. Put them on reservations. And it says, and, and thou shalt be unto him as if thou hast wiped a looking glass, and thou shalt know that his rust have not been altogether wiped away. I mean, this is this is the this is the way that the Lord created him to be. 
The Lord created this man to be the devil, to be the wicked. Let me get that scripture I'm thinking about. So this is Jeremiah 13 and verse 23. And the reads, can an Ethiopian change his skin or, or the leper his spots? Then may ye also do good that are accounted to do evil. All right. So can a leopard change, change his spots? Can a zebra change his stripes? The answer is no. And that's the same way what it is with this devil. Unless the man is an Israelite foreigner that appears to look like an Edomite. You know, Israelite foreigner, he, he Jake, his spirit, his spirit is naturally upright. All right, our people are wicked, but, but, uh, this man was actually created to be the wicked that the Bible speaks of. So, you know, never trust your enemy. That was pretty much the driving point that I want to make with this lesson. So I pray that this lesson was edifying and I'm going to close out by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Akakwadash. Double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone and peace and blessings unto the hopeful elect, 144,000 men that are laboring and toiling in his work for the sake of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. And I also want to say Shalom to the innumerable multitude which consists of the men, women, and children that you have by Shai with your mercy upon in these last days. The water you have by Shai, forgive me the spirit of truth. The water you have by Shai, forgive me the Holy Spirit. The Rakak would die to make this lesson. Lord willing, until the next lesson, I'm going to say Shalom and Ababa Ba. DTA.